All right, this is Billy D here, and this is practice tips, hot practice tips from the trench. I haven't done it in a while. Uh, so this one's going to be on the ROF, which is, it will make or break your practice, and I'm kind of going to go over some of the tools that I utilize to really communicate uh, chiropractic. And again, this is the way I do it. There's other ways to do it, and I'm continually learning new ways. I just finished... Uh, Ever's coaching with uh, Dan and Barry, and they, they've got an amazing program. I've got day one down, which is the reason I like the day one is because I'm actually going back myself to doing the consults and part of the exam, and, and that's good because I, you develop a rapport. And I don't know, I'm just I'm just trying some different stuff. Been in practice 28 years. I'm never done learning. I mean, if I just finished two days here on nutrition, I mean, I love learning and I love applying stuff. So I really love using this model in the uh, report of findings to show them the devastation of what a subluxation does over time. Subluxation plus time equals death faster. So our objective is to stop the subluxation, reversing degenerative changes, i.e. in most diseases in the body or can be attributed to the subluxation complex. So I take subluxation number one very seriously and number two I also take spinal degeneration very seriously. I do kind of my own bastardization of uh, biophysics. I do some drop table. I do uh, some Pettibon stuff. I do Billy D stuff. I do Diversify. But, and I try to get people to say that. People asking you what's your technique. Your technique should be you and you should be based on all the years and everything you've compiled together. You and you pick little bits and pieces. Same thing with practice management. Same thing with anything in life. You, whether it's guitar or surfing, you are you and you just implement different things from other people. Now I got a special guest here, Chad, which I'm going to get to in a minute. Uh, that we're going to go over, which I feel is probably 50% the biggest component of doing a proper report of findings is having fucking kick butt x rays. And let me tell you what! Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just get excited. That I'm a Taurus and I do not like change. I will, I live in the same house since 1989. I drove an 87 Subaru for probably 20 years. I don't like change. And when somebody talked to me about doing digital, it was like, yeah, dude, whatever. You know, I like my my full spine radiographs. I used to love to buy these big boxes to film. I found this, I was looking under my desk to see what my code was so I could get in here, and I found this box to film. If anybody wants this, I'll give them a deal on it, like free. Uh, seven by seven box of film for free for any of you people out there. Plus I have some view boxes for free if you guys want them. Uh, you'll get rid of them eventually too. Uh, where was I? So here's the deal. I was like forever so resistant to do the thing. Yeah, I think I came here two, three dozen times trying to explain to you the differences between it, the benefits, and uh, it took, took a little bit before uh, you saw the light and you right. know, wanted to make the change. But uh, And it was you and Nate Dominguez. Correct. Yeah. And one of the biggest things is just the toxicology of the developing room. Yeah, I mean, it, it used to walk in the front door and you could smell it. Yeah. And let me tell you what, when you're seeing a lot of new peeps and you're doing a lot of re-exams, that, that developing machine was just friggin' just getting choked on film every day. Yeah, and you'd walk into that room and it was oh, worse. It was hideous. It, it was, was just like the thing leaked and there was brown like stains on the walls and everything. It was soggy and it was just like, oh. Do you remember that little fan at the top? The far, it was called a fart fan. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the guy that built it. Yeah. So, number one, you don't ever have to buy film again. Yeah. Number two, we don't have the toxic chemicals. You don't have the toxic chemicals. How about the quality of the films? What do you think? Well, they, I mean, you, you the tell images. me, the images, compared to what you had before, it's a night right. day difference. It's a night difference. Especially on, let me be nice, big people. Yes. Large mass. And you're doing those, those ROFs on people, it's like, can't you see? You know, it was like the full, like, ghost x-rays. Because you get somebody that's 300 pounds and it's impossible to get a good picture on them. So, like I tell people, I don't really understand people that try to piecemeal stuff together. I just went and said, give me the Ferrari. In fact, I think I wanted more than you guys even gave me. I really, I said, give me the hospital because I don't ever want to take a bad x-ray again in my life. Yeah, the system, the system you have is, is by far the best of the best. Yeah. Um, but, but even with that, um, there, there's a lot of other systems that just, just maybe even keeping your old x-ray system and retrofitting it with making it going digital, 
that that alone is going to increase the quality and um, you're not as long as it's high frequency though right as long as you know we have customers that do it with even low frequency systems yeah the image quality is not going to be as good as what you can see but you know if you can only afford to, to go with you know the, right. the lower right. price package um, it's better than the film and the chemicals and everything else. right and I'm just I, I like to do things once and be done yeah. you know I'm not somebody that wants to like I like to have the best too, because if I'm going to do this, I've done it for 28 years. I plan on doing it for another 30 years, probably. Well, as long as I'm alive, man, and uh, you know, I want to just make sure that this thing's. In, you guys are good with the customer service. Not that we've ever really needed it, but I mean, you're always around. You're here in Irvine, post yeah. or Orange County, yeah. so right in Irvine. Um, yeah, we. You know, it's the systems that they just don't break. Right. Um, yeah. You know, typically, the the times that you called us is you forgot a password or. Uh, you, I climbed it on my desk and found it. Yeah. Today. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they're, 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 you know, once they're up and running, you don't have any moving parts with the, the digital portion of it. So, you know, was it eight seconds, nine seconds, you're able to see the image? Right. Yeah, so there's not a lot that goes into it. Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, ongoing, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot less than anything you have to deal with with the, uh, the x-ray. Right. So let's go through. Can you see that okay on the, or should we turn the lights out right now? Um. What do you think, yeah, Nick? Probably turn the lights on. And uh, do you want to zoom in on that image much at all? Can you do that? Because this is an interesting case I had this week. And this is another reason why I think it's important for doctors to take x-rays, is that this person came in, she'd fallen out of bed, which to me doesn't sound like, like a big injury. Yeah. She's a 36-year-old female, and she had a history of neck pain for like 5, 10 years. And uh, also headaches, just typical stuff we see. So, you know, it would be easy for someone to say, ah, oh, she's probably sprained her neck, let's adjust her. But, you know, we took an x-ray on her and we can see a major uh, defect here, or i.e. anterior body fracture. Now, what's cool about this is not only you can see it, but then you can go up to here and you can magnify this sucker. And you can really look at it in detail and you can actually see the fracture in there. And, of course, I was pretty convinced it was... Uh, fracture, but then I called my good buddy, Dr. Clifford Tao, Rankinograph, chiropractic, a uh, radiologist, I like that word, Rankinograph, what is it, Rankinologist, sorry, uh, who is a CalJam uh, x-ray, five hours of x-ray at CalJam, he actually makes it fun. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he's got some funny cases. Yeah, he brought some, a really good case for you. Yeah, yeah. a lot of uh, extra, extraneously uh, added stuff to x-rays. All right, so, yeah, so we can highlight that, and then I just, what I do is I just emailed it to him. That's another beauty. In the old days, you'd have to get your files, and you'd go and put them in the manila envelope, and the mail of it, and then you get there, and, you know, then the film quality wasn't that good. It was just like, shit. I'm just stoked. All right, so, I, and here's what I do. I like, when people come in, I like to show them my badass neck, okay, and you can blow the neck up as big as you want it. Alright, I had to show you how to do something today. I showed you how to use the hand, the, the magic hand. So yeah, you make sure people know, and I do like a lot of biophysics markings, because I do, so I, my goal is to put some curves in. People say, you can't put curves in, that's because you've never tried. You know, you gotta do the traction and stuff. Uh, so we go through, we ask everybody what the disc, I, I really, I'm big on educating people, and I want them to know what normal is, and then we bring it over to Abby normal, and we can see that she has obviously a reverse curve. She's got some significant anterior translation. She's got an atlas problem, and.